All right. I'm so excited to introduce our community today to Katie Bramlett, co-founder of We Shape, which we'll talk about. A, and Katie's a fierce advocate for bringing awareness to women's health and fitness. Welcome, Katie. Thank you so much for having me. Happy to be I'm here. So excited. Thank you. I'm excited to chat today. I feel like we have a lot to dive into and uncover and maybe a good place to start. I was looking on your website and this really popped out on the page for me and it said changing how and why both underline the way we work out. And I was kind of curious, like, where's this passion of all of this, this change of how and why, and why is that important right now in our health journey, our fitness society? Yeah, well, I mean, it really started from a company that I used to run. I, my co-founder and I used to have a body transformation company, and we helped thousands of people lose a lot of weight through diet diet plans and exercise plans. And it was kind of person after person that I saw really, they would lose the weight and they would be happy for a short time. Um, but it was, it, there was still a pretty high level of dissatisfaction. And I started going like, wait, I have the intention to help people. And I think we're doing something good, but the outcome is not what I thought it would be. And I don't think it's what they thought it would be either. So we started doing some more soul searching and going like, we're, we're not going to actually run this company anymore, which was, a I mean, I'm going to be honest, it was a hard decision uh, because we were doing very well. We had made the Inc. 500 three times in a row. We were scaling our team, scaling the company. And, um, but I also just knew that if I was going to be leaving my children at home every day to come here and do something, I had to do something that actually like benefited people. And I could see that it wasn't really benefiting people. Like they, we all kind of thought it was, but then when it was all over, I was like, I don't know that it really is. So we shut that company down and then we started WeShape. And so we started WeShape with the intention of solving what we believe are two main problems in the fitness industry. So one is really on the exercise side and one is on the mentality side. So a lot of people think that a good a good workout is one that is, you know, where you're sweating a lot and you're calorie burning and you're pushing through pain. And yeah, I mean, okay, but what we really have discovered is that does your 85 year old self really want that plan? And we have kind of discovered the answer is no. So we said, we got to change the entire way we're approaching even the perspective of what is quote unquote, a good workout. We want to almost redefine what a quality workout is. That is something that could serve you now, but also as, as our bodies age. So um, our, all of our workouts are a technology-driven product where uh, people interact with the screen and uh, can scale up or down in real time. And all of our programming is, is rooted in strength, flexibility, balance, coordination. These are all things that the body needs now and, and, and for the rest of our time here. So um, I always ask people like, again, what does your 85 year old self want? Does it, does it want endless cardio or does it want quality, functional, mindful movement? So that's kind of what we're doing on, on the exercise side. And then on the mentality side, again, like I said, I watched thousands of people get body transformations and, and really not be satisfied. So how do we start bringing awareness, dissecting some of the toxic messages and the culture that we live in around this kind of fat phobic, uh, you know, obsessive thinness that that the cult is the culture we live in. And how do we dissect some of those messages and then really go deeper inside to figure out how to cultivate that internal worth, that internal validation, even if it's not aligned with the validation that our society gives us. So that is the work we're doing here. <laughs> well, it's so beautifully stated. It is a lot. And I feel like it's this generation changing. It's going to take a while to really pull everybody on board with this. But I believe society, I believe our listeners are hearing these messages because you definitely fall into my camp of the slow and steady. It's changing by mind and body in this system sustainable way, which means it's not a quick fix, right? Like your clients are getting a steady fix, but it's not quick and you're not losing 20 pounds in 20 days type of a thing. Yeah. And I try to remind people like, 
you know, it's intentionality is incredibly important because that's where we put our energy. So if our intention is just constantly centered around weight loss, we actually lose, in my opinion, what is the most important thing, which is that connection with self. I have Mm -hmm. seen many, many people, like I said, lose weight and not be happy. And I really tell people a lot of the time, like, I know you probably want weight loss and maybe that will come, but we're actually, I would love to not even really think about that in this moment, because the truth of the matter is if we can't be happy with ourselves today, no changes that we make with our body will really bring that deep sense of satisfaction and, and, and acceptance and it's really important to understand that piece. So if we shift the intention to how do I cultivate more self-acceptance? How do I cultivate love for the for the body that I have today? How do I cultivate appreciation for that? That is something that will be more sustainable whether the weight loss happens or not. Yes, and I think this is such it's such a deep journey and for some listeners they're going I get it. You know, I've experienced that. I thought that I got to close to what I would have called my goal weight and there was not that aha woohoo moment for me. And then I think other people are possibly even going I don't really understand what you're saying. What do you mean, you know, if I don't hit that goal weight that I've always thought I was going to it was going to make or break, you know, my relationships or my career. Can you kind of go into even some of maybe like case studies of seeing that specific client and in their experience of why it didn't have that feeling for them? Oh, it's really complicated. And I always tell people like the, the movement piece is a little easier. I'm like, Hey, we can all understand why the 85 year old self wants to be able to squat and lift and push and pull and press and be flexible and have, you know, we can get that right. We can pretty much shift our mentality and go, okay, I can see why maybe riding the exercise bike two hours a day, maybe it would be more beneficial to be focusing on functional movement. The mentality piece is this piece where I'm like, Ooh, can I come on like a hundred of your episodes and we can dissect, can you bring on individual people? It's, The generalizations that are made are very difficult. And I want to hold space for people who are in larger bodies because the culture that we live in is fat phobic and does not support that. And that is really a harsh and terrible reality that we live in. Now, do I think that that has to be reality forever? No. And do I think that we have to kind of succumb to that, 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 that existence? I don't think so. Um, It's kind of like I like to tell people like there are plenty of people who are actually in larger bodies who are full of confidence and full of self-worth and and love themselves just as they are. So that those are case studies that I love to look at because those are the people that I'm like, well, you we think that in order to be fully happy with ourselves, we have to be this weight. But if that were true, how are those people happy? (laughs) So we we put those things together. And what I'm trying to say is we've been doing that for decades. And I just ask people like, is that working for you? Have you, is it working? And 99.9% of the time people say no. I'm like, okay, so let's just do an experiment and shift the intention from weight loss to how do I cultivate a deeper sense of self-worth for me? That validation that comes from the inside. And that is hard work. It's not, like you said, this is, this is not stuff that happens overnight, Um, But I will share a story of a woman who came in. Sometimes we do these feel good challenges where it's not about weight loss or anything. It's just literally about moving your body and connecting with our community and breaking down old beliefs. And we had a woman come in. She was in her 70s. And she said, I came here to work out. And when I left, I had an entirely different shift in how I thought about this process. And she said, I used to look in the mirror and I would hear you're fat. You need to lose weight. Go on a diet. You're not good enough. And now when I look in the mirror, I realize that was not my voice. Those were the voices of my my sisters, of my mother, of the culture that I live in. But when I think, when I connect with the deeper part of me, the voice that comes in is you are enough. You're beautiful. You're worthy. You're completely valuable. And she was like, I didn't even know that I those weren't my voices. Like that wasn't me. And whenever we, you know, I always ask people like, you know, who, who, who are those voices in there? And when we really sit with it, there's a, here's a clue for everyone. If the voice is judgmental or critical or harsh, that is not your true authentic self. That is a message or, a, 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 you know, some type of 
communication that was taught to you. That that's not that's not who we truly are. Who we truly are and our authentic core is a person who has so much love for ourselves. And I know that that is pretty woo woo and it's kind of but at the same time it's true. And I've watched many people come in here and leave and what they have discovered is when they reach for that person when they work to get to that those other voices get quieter and and it really doesn't even become about weight loss at all anymore. Right. And that's something that I wish that if we could show, you know, it's one of those, it's almost faith that when you start the journey, that other piece will come. You have to have this faith in the professional, the faith in your, your coach and your person helping hand holding you through the process that the next results, the next fun, the wins are coming. It just might not look like how you thought it should look as you start. So it's kind of a leap of faith, I believe when we oh, totally when we this new journey. Yeah. Yeah, totally. And I think it's so funny because we are so used. I mean, this is what diet culture does to us. We are so used to prescriptive workout this many days a week, eat this exact food, don't eat this food, do this, weigh this, that when we say, oh, just be open and connect with yourself. And there's like no real prescription. People are like, what do you mean? It's like, it's very confusing. Right. Um, but I will say, so I don't have the prescriptive path because everyone's is different. But I will say that the intention of being open to something different with the intention of connecting with yourself um, more than we, we currently are now, I think is 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 enough. I, I really do believe that that intention alone opens doors and creates sort of a magical process. Yes, it's a leap of faith, exactly like you're saying, like, wait, what's around the corner? Or, you know, I, I'm, I'm getting sucked back in or it, it's not a linear journey. But just the, the sheer openness of I'm interested in, I'm open to trying a different path. I think there's a lot of magic in that alone. Yes. Oh, you are so beautifully worded. I love how things come out. Thank you. You can just see it. And I have two paths. I want to go down this with you. And I feel like we could connect them both to this, but you definitely talk about toxic as a word that comes out of your mouth, like toxic weight loss culture. And you're kind of going down that path already, but can we just hit this one more time? Like why is diet culture? And by the way, I'm a hundred percent with you, but describe it to our listeners. Why is diet culture so toxic? And you use the word linear. I want you to dive deeper into that too, that it's not a linear journey. Yeah. I mean, first of all, I mean, I, again, how many episodes could we, could we do here? I, I it's like, first of all, the concept that there's one body type that we should all be with 8 billion people in the world, it's laughable. And that that body type is ever changing. It's skinny, it's curvy, it's this, it's that. It's like, it's not even realistic. And so somehow we buy into it and we try to get to it. And we think that it's like, we've been promised this magical thing. And I just want to say, I mean, I can say because I've been here, um, People in the fitness industry are fabulous marketers, you know, like one, one of the biggest things that I said when we were going to shift the company to our team, um, who was fabulous, by the way, and super like, yeah, let's go this direction, is I said, if profit was second and the human body, like the physical and psychological and emotional and greater culture needs were taken to account first, what would we be offering the customer, Right. Mm -hmm. Most fitness companies do not do it that way. It's like, how do we maximize our profit margin? So they're not taking into your, your emotional or physical needs into account when they're making those decisions, right? And, and I know that some people do it with the best of intentions because I was that person doing it with the best of intentions, but I was asleep at the wheel and I wasn't really understanding the actual impact, which is a lot of, in my opinion, physical and emotional harm, right? Telling people to push through workouts, like, what kind of what kind of advice is that? Like it's like you're setting yourself up for an injury or telling people to follow a diet when their body was telling them to stop. Like the we have we have really destroyed this beautiful connection that our mind and body have that is full of in, infinite wisdom so that we can make sure our the companies are making a lot of money. So I feel like I just have to say that not all, but a lot of companies in the fitness space don't really have the mentality of how do I provide the thing that's best for you, not just physically, but emotionally and psychologically. So um, yeah, so just the idea that there's one body type is one way. Um, the fact that we're, you know, really telling people to disconnect from their body signals, the fact that 
were basically saying you're only worth it if you weigh this much. Like that is absolutely insane. It's like if my best friend came to me and said, oh, I'm just, you know, like I'm, I'm, I, I'm not going to be worth it if I don't weigh this much. I would be like, you're insane. You're the kindest, most caring person I know. We have the best. Like, why are we fixated on this? It's like, we've been trapped into this vortex where we just obsess and do anything we can because we think that our worth and value is, is dependent on this number on the scale. And it, it truly isn't. And I'm just, I really want to give people permission to stop giving that power away. Stop giving that power away. You're, you're basically saying I'm waiting for something outside of me to validate my existence and worth. And I know that we all do this. I am guilty of it myself, but it is, it, there is a chance to go down a different path where we're not reliant on, on, on other for that, for that validation of worth. Right. And then I think that like we can head Bob along here and go, amen, this is beautiful. And then we exit a session together or you exit a podcast and you get thrown back into the real world. And all of a sudden you have those other messages coming at you and it's easy to get sucked back in for a second. And I think this is where you were maybe going with the nonlinear, like it's okay. Just because you can start to believe something like this doesn't mean that you're just set up for success for the rest of your life. Like you have to have this poured over you daily, weekly, and be in more of like, I call it curating your social media, curate the people that you're around so that the, that messaging is very similar because we do get sucked the other direction. Even as professionals, it's easy to hear something sometimes and go, well, maybe that would work for somebody. Do you experience that? Oh, absolutely. Like I was laughing with my husband the other day because we're going on a trip to Mexico. And I was like, huh, two years ago, I would have been eating a certain way before I left because I knew I was going to be wearing a bathing suit and I would have been doing this extra exercise thing. And I'm like, and I, and I still think about doing that. Like, oh, you're going. And then I go pause. What are you really trying to do here? Like, will your husband and your friends who are going going to like criticize you because you didn't eat bread for two. It's like, when I think about it, it's just, I'm like, why don't you just give yourself permission to just be and to not worry about that and to enjoy you're taking your liter. I'm, I, I, it's like these talks I have with myself. Like you're literally choosing to take joy out of your life because you think that you will be loved more if you look a certain way. And, um, yeah. So I, I, I think the other thing that we have to remind ourselves of, so yeah, I go back and forth. Right. But, um, yeah. it's two steps, you know, two steps forward, one step back, two steps forward, one step back. And then slowly over time, I do get to feel liberated and be like, oh, I don't even think about that anymore. Um, but it, it didn't happen overnight. And, um, I think the other thing that is important to mention is just, oh man, that, who we decide to spend our time with and what what information and content we choose to digest, no one is forcing us to do those things. And so we have to take a little bit of responsibility. Um, so like one simple thing I try to encourage people is like, if you can curate your social media in a way that it, it is better for your mental health, like maybe we don't follow the fitness models all the time. Maybe we don't follow the person who's promoting the diet. Maybe, I mean, those are just going to be triggers, right? So um, who you follow on social media is a choice. And I think that is a really easy, quick, uh, tool for people to be able to start that process of curating their environment that is, is better for their mental health. Yes. And it's, and it's building some belief system that it matters that much because it does. And we know that, and you mentioned you have kiddos. I do too. And I feel like just not even putting magazines in the house. Like it's easy as a parent to curate your space, but when we're left up to our own devices, things just trickle in accidentally too. Like it takes effort to almost pull them out, which is interesting. You know, it's effort, but it's effort well spent to, to make our spaces. I mean, you're going to have to spend the energy anyway. So are we going to spend the energy, like taking time to curate it, you know, uh, content around us that, that is better for us? Or are we going to spend the energy in, in criticism and self-judgment and shame? <laughs> I mean, that, that's no, still energy right. spent, right? So, so <laughs> I think we have to be mindful of that too. It's, it's not, it's not a free pass to be sitting in all of that, that, that takes your life force to be in that too. 
you for going there. I think we all need these talks of just personal responsibility. And sometimes it's hard to hear for a moment, but in worded in the right way and with the right love behind it, it's for our own good. And we do need to take that responsibility. So thank you for that reminder. That's amazing. And I offer people kindness and grace because we didn't choose to be in this diet culture. We were born into it. And so um, it's like, you can't, you, you know, we're just all doing the best that we know how to do. But now if we know we do, that's when the choice comes in, right? That's when the choice comes in. Yeah, that's so good. So you're so good about intentionality and then this word um, intrinsic, which I feel like most people are pretty familiar with, but you mentioned this connect with your intention. Here comes both of these using positive psychology to help you move from needing constant motivation to building an intrinsic desire to to build in workouts or to build in health into our life. And can you kind of unpack that for a minute that where somebody's coming from that constant motivation need to, it just happens because they want it. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, first of all, I think that that is a slow process, but I like to think about it in the way, like, I really don't like the word motivation. Like if I just do this thing to motivate myself, it's like, it's all, it's all rooted in judgment and punishment. I just, I don't, I don't like it to be honest with you. Uh, I, I've been in the fitness industry for over 20 years now, and it was, I didn't actually start enjoying movement until about three years ago. And it coincidentally coincided with my transition into kind of unsubscribing from diet and exercise culture. Um, and I don't think that that is a coincidence. I think when I shifted the focus to how do I cultivate my own self-worth? How do I cultivate a deeper connection with my inner voice and not that external voice? I kind of started just wanting to move my body. And I, I, I like to think about it like a child or a dear friend that you love so much. You, you, you care for that relationship. You care for those people. And it's so funny because we don't do that for ourselves. And I, and I think that no one has to tell me, make sure you text your best friend. It's like, of course, I'm going to text her if she's like having a rough day or just check on and say hi. Like those are things I, I, I value and I want to do. And I think it's the same thing for ourselves. When we learn to, to care and nurture who we are as a person and, and go down a path of like, hey, wait a minute, I want to cultivate more self-worth for myself. I don't want to wait for the person to compliment my body before I feel like I'm worth it. I want to figure out how to cultivate that myself. And I don't necessarily have the answer for that. I think that is actually a lifelong journey. I don't know that anyone ever fully gets to that full expression of that. But maybe if, if you know someone, please let me know. Um, but if I just have that intention and decide to go down to that path, down that path, I do believe these things that like where we had to motivate ourselves, we just... It's been my experience anyway, and I and I don't know how it's been for other people, but that's been my experience, that when I go down that path and I just deeply want to care for myself and I want to learn how to be nicer to myself and I want to learn how to be less judgmental and I want to like treat myself the way I treat my best friend, I I don't I don't have to be shamed or motivated into to exercising. I, 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 I connect and I go, God, I feel kind of restless today. I'm like, oh, you moved your body in four days. Okay, I'm going to go on a hike right? Like, oh, my back's kind of bothering me. Oh, you, maybe you could stretch. Like it's, it's, it's a deeper connection with self. And then I feel inclined to listen to those messages from my body. And then ironically, a lot of those messages involve movement. <laughs> so it's not a perfect thing, right? I don't wake up every day and go, I want to exercise, but, um, some days I do. And I didn't used to do that. I used to like shame myself into doing it every day. Yes. And you're not saying this in so many words. And I feel like I'm taking this like kind of shallow, but we're taking calorie burn out of exercise with all of this that you're saying too. Like when somebody is showing up to exercise because they need to be motivated and they need to, it's a should they're shooting, shooting on themselves. It's normally because I need to go burn X amount of calories. And what's happening is when you take all of that away, now we're doing it to your point of I'm moving to feel better. I'm moving to, um, lift depression to combat these earlier daylight time, you know, the darkness coming on, like there's so many reasons to move. And that's where Katie's going with this is just, and then we have, if we're connected with our body, we can actually hear our body saying, thank you. Thank you for that today, because now my neck feels better. Now my back feels better. I'm happier, more joyful. So 
Man, then it's one of those areas like you can get to it, but you have to practice it a lot. And I think that's beautiful that you have your own personal story of I've seen myself here and I am now on this other side. Yeah. And it, and we think that that other side is I'm going to wake up and want to exercise seven days a week. Nobody said you have to exercise seven days a week. That's not what the other side looks like. The other side looks like I'm going to check in with my body and see how I feel today. What does my body need? We're just so disconnected from that because we've been taught focus on the calories, push through the pain. Like we don't even really know how to receive messages from our body. So Um, But again, just having that openness and that intention to connect with ourselves in a more meaningful way, connect with our body in a more meaningful way. Again, I do believe just that pure intention combined with a little bit of openness creates a really magical path. Love that. Love it. So I want to make sure with our time that our listeners really understand your We Shape offerings, your business. Um, Go ahead and take us through what you offer, where to find you and what that looks like, even from a virtual end for individuals. Yeah. So all of our products are online where um, you can go to, we actually have a special code for your listeners. Let me get that. They can go to weshape.com forward slash direction podcast for a two week free trial. Um, Essentially people take a quiz. So we understand what your body needs because everybody has different needs And then we offer, you can log into the product at any time and there will always be a workout there. And when you push play, you can interact with the the workouts. They don't require any equipment or anything. You just push play. We'll offer like, for instance, if you're doing a squat, we'll then say, was that too, did that feel too hard? Do you need to scale up? Do you need to scale down? And then sort of based on how you're feeling that day, you can scale the movements up or down. But they're all body weight exercises. They're about 30 minutes. I actually have an intention of doing a product iteration where we offer like as little as 10 minutes because I also think that people think that they have to do like 30 or an hour. It's like it doesn't really need to be that much. It could be less. So I'm hoping that that will be a feature that we offer here soon. So oftentimes I tell the people push play and then stop when you don't, when you're done, you know, it doesn't, you don't have to do the full 30 minutes. Um, And then we also offer community calls in our products. So when you log in, you'll see a list of calls. We have like a share call where we have a host who comes in and just, we just share about our day, share about our week, share about our struggles and just create community. We have Q and A's with our movement experts. So if you're like, oh, I'm struggling with my shoulder or my knee is bothering me, you can go in and actually be in a call with professionals who can help answer questions about your body and movement. And then starting in January, we're going to be bringing in um, different types of experts like psychologists or toxic weight loss culture experts, and they're going to be doing uh, Q&As with our members as well. So we have a whole community element that focuses on the education and the mentality piece, as well as all the workouts which is wonderful. What a great resource. And again, if they're signed up and they're doing the program, they show up to their workout whenever it fits into their day. Yeah. It's not live workouts because essentially what we're trying to do is get a workout that's perfectly designed for you. So everybody is doing the quote unquote, same workout every day, but, or whenever they're pushing play, but it's really different because um, behind the scenes, we have thousands of video movement files. So yeah, the workouts are kind of done whenever it works for you. And then the calls are the ones that are scheduled because they're live and they're on Zoom and yeah. Yes. Oh, I, okay. This is this is cutting edge. I'm loving this. <laughs> all right. So I'll have all of those links in the show notes. I always like to end like this. Like if you could wrap your arms around our listeners, if they heard nothing else from you today, what is the one thing that you hope and pray that they heard out of you? Uh, that regardless of where your what your number is on the scale, you are worthy, you are valuable, you are loved in this world and you don't need to, you're not broken. You don't need to change anything to deserve that. So good. Thank you so much for all of your time and your wisdom today. Yes. Thank you so much for having me.